Uh, it's a good thing that I was never accused of being silent, so I think everybody everybody's going to hear me just fine. Is there anybody here who can't hear me at this point? Good. Never happened to me before. So, uh, as Ivan said, and you have a very nice name, uh, my name is Ivan as well. Uh, I'm a strategic partnership director at a company called Born Fight. Probably most of you people around here didn't, uh, didn't actually, you don't know about this company since it's three weeks old. However, however, it's uh, it's launched as a sister company of a co uh, another company called The Guardian, which you all probably heard of. So this is one of our new spin-offs, and uh, I'll tell you at the end of the presentation a little bit more about our new brand because my marketing guys are going to kill me if I don't do that. But at this point, uh, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit more about uh, enterprise software. And actually, I'm really happy about Mary Ann's presentation. Bit, uh, before because it was talking about fear and uh, when I was talking with guys from King ICT when we were making plans about the conference uh, I was actually telling them that I want to talk about people who are afraid of enterprise softwares as something big, something huge, something that's very, you know, very complicated and I really wanted to give you some, some, some information that it really isn't that complicated that it isn't that hard and that you don't have to be afraid of it. So thank you for making your presentation. And at least I'm not, uh, I'm not going to be uh, telling you about how you can you know, lose that fear because we already did that. So uh, just, to, just to start, uh, when, I was, when I was preparing for this presentation, obviously as everybody else, uh, I was Googling. So, I found this, uh, like a definition of what an enterprise software is. And it's basically like enterprise software is uh, every, every piece of computer software that is used for satisfying organizational need rather than needs of an individual. So for example, you wouldn't say that Facebook is uh, an, an enterprise software because it's there to satisfy the need of an individual, not an organization. So, just briefly, one question, show of hands, uh, I won't be putting you on the, on the spotlight here. So, who of you uh, has ever used any enterprise software? Show of hands. Okay, so a lot, that's a good thing. And who of you has ever worked on designing and developing an enterprise software? A lot. Okay, tough audience. Good one. Great. So, when I was when I was talking to people before this before this presentation in my company and uh, with some other people who are completely not in the IT IT industry, when I was asking them, so when I tell you the keyword key term enterprise software, what do you think of? At least 60, 70 percent of them was SAP SAP like that's the enterprise software that's the you know most complicated software that was ever in the existence whatever. Like so. Another part of the people, especially people from Croatia, were you know that that softwares that you see those ladies that are you know in some government institutions and when you come to their booth and they are you know putting some stuff that ugly things that you need to write and then you need another paper so she can input it there. That's also an enterprise software. And yeah, the answer is yes. However. Are those kinds of so software only things that we can say this is an enterprise software? And obviously the answer is no. It's not only old school, ugly looking uh, softwares. It's actually something that's not that complicated, not that ugly, and not something that you really don't want to use because it's making you sick when you have to look at it. It's making you sick because it's very, very complicated. And it's, it's making you sick when you see somebody else using that. So it's not only that. And that's actually the reason why I'm here to talk to you about enterprise softwares and what actually they can be and who actually needs them and who can actually, who can actually use them. So as the next, next question that I, that I want to ask is, like, what can be an enterprise? So, in its core definition, we saw it's a, it's a software that it's basically it's used uh, to satisfy organizational needs. 
and not the needs of an individual. But to actually expand on that, uh, what we can say is that enterprise software is something that has really a wide, widespread performance. It's usually used on multiple different physical locations. Also, it has a big focus on scalability, robustness. It has to have the ability to handle multiple users. It has to uh, have the ability to handle uh, when you get more users at some point, then you, uh, then you have to scale it down, then you have to scale it up. And also, it's something that's business oriented, and I would dare to say that it's something that's usually mission critical for your business. Basically, something without what your business cannot survive, or at least it cannot function in an efficient way as it does with using that, with using that software. Also, one other thing is that usually enterprise software is something that's centrally managed. But when I was thinking about enterprise softwares, usually the first thing that comes across my mind at least, it's desktop applications. You know, you have a, a, an enterprise software, then some IT guy comes to your computer, he plugs in uh, a, a CD or USB or whatever, installs that, and this is what you have on your working station, this is your, this is your software. And they do that with a lot of different people. In my, in my mind, especially today, when everything is cloud-based, that's not really efficient and that's not really scalable. So, what about the platforms? Where, where, and where an enterprise software in today's modern times should be? Where, where it should exist? And what, what it should do? Let's think, think about uh, the behavior and what are regular users used to nowadays. So, even though when we are talking about enterprise software, what we are saying it's a software that satisfies the needs of an organization, not an individual. However, the organization is a thing that's comprised of individuals. And what you need to ask yourself is how are going to how the individuals that are the part of this organization, how are they going to work with this software? So basically today users, individuals are on multiple platforms. Even me today. I have my cell phone, which basically is connected to this laptop, which is connected to this screen. I'm constantly on two or on two or three screens. So basically, modern enterprise software is a cloud-based solution which exists on all, of on all of the platforms that you have. Your desktop computer, your laptop, your tablet, your mobile phone, even your smartwatch if you have it. Obviously, when you think about that, uh, you won't be putting all of the features of an enterprise software on your smartwatch. However, if you're a manager and you need to uh, have a look on the data or a report that your enter enterprise software gives you, why wouldn't you do that when you're on the move from your mobile phone? Why do you need to go to your laptop and actually drive the report from there? You will use that enterprise software on your laptop when you need to do some heavy lifting, some heavy work. However, why wouldn't you have a reduced version on your mobile phone or even some sort of notifications on your smartwatch? Because this is where enterprise software needs to go, actually to follow the behaviors and expectations of users. Obviously, cloud solutions are a little bit more easy to actually upgrade because you do it centrally on your cloud, everybody gets an update, and it's, it's great. Just a few, few short examples of uh, enterprise software that uh, I worked on uh, with my colleagues from my company. Just to s set, set the bar to see that not everything complicated isn't uh, enterprise software. So first example, uh, the software is called I on the Go. It has very, very catchy name. Uh, what we did here, uh, we have a client that is in a specific industry and a specific niche of that industry. So it's an, an educational industry and the niche is consulting for educational school districts in the US. So what they do, they basically go to a school district which has like five schools or 15 schools or 30 schools and they develop a five year or seven year development strategy for that, for that district. What happened was they would develop a strategy, but the strategy wouldn't be implemented. 
and they came up with the idea, why wouldn't we help those districts, these organizations, to actually implement those strategies with using an enterprise software, a software that's built for a specific niche, for a specific need, and that's basically mission critical for those districts in order to advance, in order to create progress, and in order to be efficient and successful. It's not complicated, it's not ugly, it's not desktop based, it's cloud based, you can access it from all of your devices. So that's modern, modern enterprise software. Another example, one thing that we actually did for ourselves in our company. So we were, we were having uh, a lot of pain with choosing time tracking softwares. I think you all know why time tracking softwares are important. Basically, you need to keep your budget straight, you need to keep track of what, what your people are doing, and basically, Adam, you need them. So what we did, we created a specifically time tracking software, which is an enterprise software because it actually serves as a, something that will fit the organizational need, not an individual's need. And we created it for ourselves, where you have different layers of users, where you have uh, uh, different things that you can see on different platforms. But it, it is an enterprise software. So, the question that I'm asking is, usually an enterprise software, you can watch it from two different perspectives. One perspective is, I have, a, I have an IT company, and I want to build that software, so I can use it as a revenue source, so I can sell it to other companies that they might want to use it. Another thing is, okay, I'm also an IT company, so I have resources. I want to build something that will help my business grow, not for selling to, the, to, to other organizations, as a uh, software for internal use. So, these might be the cases when you're thinking about actually building an enterprise software. However, when you come to this point, there are some questions that you need to ask yourself in order to see does it make sense to build an enterprise software. So, first thing to ask is, like, do I really have a problem? Do I really need to invest time, money, resources in order to build an enterprise software? What is the problem that I'm solving? In two examples that I showed you, first one, it was obviously our client has noticed that his, his clients have problems in efficiency and actually delivering the work. So there is the problem. In our example, there was a problem of time tracking, so we just had to, had to solve it in some way. Do I have a need? Obviously, in both cases, there was a need. Is there a need on the market? In the first case, which was market-oriented, yes, there was a need on the market. Yes, you might say. There are multiple project management softwares that people can use. Yeah, but this was specifically tailor-made for, for this case. Okay, again, uh, is there competition on the market? That's an important question. Why? Obviously, if you want to start an, uh, and develop an enterprise software as your revenue source, something that you, you will sell to other people, you need to ask yourself, okay, if there is a competition on the market, Will I bring something new to the market? Will my, uh, my software be better? Will my software be faster? Will it be cheaper? Whatever. How can, how can I succeed on the market? And the thing is, sometimes it might be for internal use, sometimes it might be cheaper just to use already existing piece, piece of software. Also, the important thing to ask yourself is, who is going to use that software? Okay, organizational needs, again. However, who are the individuals? How can we tailor-made that software to satisfy individual needs within the organization to help this organization grow? What are the challenges that I'll have here? Are people uh, computer savvy? Are they not? Sometimes it happens, especially in large organizations where people have to use software and they're not very tech savvy. They don't know they, their way around computers. Uh, is there a challenge that maybe people are going to be afraid of change? Whatever. And eventually the most important question to ask is, is this enterprise software going to increase my revenue, reduce my cost, or reduce the risk 
that I have in my business. And then you come to the, to the point where you say, okay, I answered all of those questions, but resources are expensive. I am a company that deals with consulting, or I am a company that deals with retail. I don't want to uh, invest in uh, hiring, development, and design resources. Well, yeah, you don't have to, obviously. You can always speak to other, different, to other companies uh, that deal with IT, that deal with IT software, that deal with both closed source technologies and open source technologies to help you out to build something, something like that. And as a final, final message that I, want to, that I want to transfer here is basically nobody should be afraid of an enterprise software. Enterprise software is some, not something that you need to walk away from. As a developer, obviously, enterprise software is something that are probably exciting. However, for some people, it might be, might be something that brings the fear, fear in them. However, it's not something that's complicated. You just need to think about three things. Will this happen, uh, help my organization to prosper? Or somebody else's organization to prosper? Will it help them to re reduce their costs, their risks? and uh, will it increase their revenue? And finally, as the third thing, uh, is this something that I can do for myself or I need to bring, bring in some help? And as a final thing, because I have like two minutes left probably, uh, as I promised at the beginning, my marketing people would kill me if I didn't show this since we have a new brand. Just a sh one minute video <laughs> of our new brand and that will be all. We strive to grab new possibilities, not to stutter or trip, but to walk with determination, to walk with passion, decode the known and the unknown. We are not passionate about making headlines. We want to make progress, create an advanced future that will help people in their everyday lives. Imagine that today, where no one tells you you can't. If you can imagine that, you know that tomorrow will be changed for the better for the progress we all need and deserve. On jobs that have been done before, our point of difference is that we dig deeper. And on jobs that no one has done before, we are happy to walk the path no one has walked and leave our footprints for others. We are the digital innovation company that creates progress and we live by the code of passionate determination. Our name is Born Fight. Two or three minutes for Q and A. If you have for Eva. Either I was very boring, or everybody understood everything. <laughs> seems like seems like they know that you're in a hurry to go to the team building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they <laughs> might know that. So you three weeks old company, they have a team building. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so <laughs> uh, we're kind of close. I hope that everybody uh, hears me okay. Uh, Time tracking is definitely one of the biggest issues that most companies have because time tracking software is dead is on the market. Toggle is maybe the most highly adopted one, are usually very expensive. So how many people did your company uh, hit, how many employees, before you decided that you were your own company? Um, so, uh, we, before we uh, started to use our own time tracking tool, we used a tool called Harvest. Probably some of you have used that, but it wasn't good enough for us. Uh, we have uh, three different companies with three different, uh, different business models and 200 people, so that was not good enough. So at the point where we hit around 100 and, or 120, we noticed that the expense that we have for actually paying uh, to somebody else for a subscription on a time tracking software, we can actually lose that expense and invest uh, in, uh, in a software that will be specifically custom made for our organization and for our needs that we have. And that actually efficiency that we will get out of the custom made <coughs> software will actually reduce even more costs in the future. But I would say at the point of like 100 employees that we started to think about that. Okay, thank you.
more questions? Or shall we let him go to Opatia? He's going to Opatia. <laughs> <laughs> he has to travel to Opatia. Okay. Uh, do, do you find the white label? Would it be white? Would it be enterprise if it's white label? So if you white label that solution, yes. 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 It's just uh, it's just a question of a business model at that point. Then. So basically, it's an uh, it's an enterprise because again, it will satisfy some some other organization's needs, and uh, that's all. It, it's not focused on an individual. It's focused to help help different organizations, be it companies, uh, be it as different associations, whatever. But if we white labeled it and started to sell it as a SaaS product, for example, it's basically SaaS enterprise, and that's that's what it is. Okay, we can let him go to his team building now. <laughs> Thank <you. laughs> Thanks once again. <laughs>